right, well, we will go ahead and get started. We'd like to welcome John Rahm, world number one, to the interview room here at the WM Phoenix Open. John, thanks for taking a few minutes with us. Making your seventh start in the event, never finished outside of the top 16. Um, obviously a special event for you, given mm -hmm. your, your history and college and so forth. So just some thoughts on being back here this week. It's always a week to look forward to. Uh, I mean, you mentioned it, spend a lot of my time in Arizona, being an ASU graduate, I have a lot of support this week. Uh, it's a home week, and it's a special event, right? It's it's an event like any any other, and it's one of those where luckily, um, you know, I'm in my home court, so I get a lot of support. So it's, it's one of those where I look forward to every year. You know, I can have a lot of fun on this golf course. Uh, it can be difficult, but moments on 16, 17, 18, and some of the holes where are now creeping up and being bigger than they used to be are, are a lot of fun. So uh, looking forward to the week, and hopefully I can keep adding to the stats, and hopefully I had a, a first place this week. Okay, and uh, you've in the calendar year, you've had three starts, finished top three and two of them and I know you said there ought to be an asterisk by Hawaii with it being the limited field no cut nonetheless top three finishes just a few comments on uh, how you're feeling with your game coming into the week you know I'm I'm comfortable um, I think one of the best decisions I've made in my life was taking those two and a half months off at the end of the year and I wouldn't be surprised if it's something I do more often because with how hectic our year can be how much effort we put into this uh, to have some time to just be home and enjoy the time off is great. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why I started playing so good. Even though my game didn't feel at its best, uh, I feel like I'm refreshed enough and what we can call, let's say, competitive stamina that's high enough to where I can actually pull those scores through and finish strong, right? I mean, shoot 33 under on the golf course that in the past I struggled putting at, right? Mm -hmm. Clearly, I didn't struggle putting. Finishing second at Torrey when I definitely didn't have my best ball striking week, uh, which is supposed to be a ball striker's course. Uh, so, yeah, I'm playing good golf, and hopefully starting this week, things start clicking a little bit better. Uh, and uh, like I said, hopefully I end, up, I end up on top this week. Okay, I've got one last question, then we'll open it up for some questions. Uh, you had a special... Uh, visitor with you today out there if you could just comment on Phoenix and how uh, how how remarkable and neat that was it was so cool because I keep thinking back to when I was 14 mm -hmm. and had I had a chance to be out here with one of my heroes I think I would have been a lot more nervous than he was yeah and probably would have made a fool of myself <laughs> let's just be honest and he composed himself in such a great manner it was incredible I mean we were playing with Aaron Rodgers as well the CEO of his management gym you know, it's not the it's it's the it's a group that can't be intimidating, right? Yeah. When you're on 16, they announce his name as well, and um, you know, probably we didn't have the time for people to hear his story, but for somebody who was born with uh, both feet clubbed, and you look at him, you wouldn't be able to tell. So it's uh, it's amazing. It's a remar remarkable young man, remarkable family, and uh, I'm hoping, I'm sure, we'll have a really bright future because uh, with what they have endured early on in his life. Uh, I mean, there's not going to be many challenges. There are going to be wars on that. Okay. Well, with that, we'll open it up and take a few questions. Start with Cameron, then we'll go to Daniel. Uh, going through the tunnel there to 16, it's kind of sensory overload, especially considering <laughs> Phoenix had never uh, actually been to a golf tournament before. What did you kind of tell him to uh, sort of calm him down and keep him from, you know, losing <laughs> consciousness? Well... There's nothing I can tell him to get him ready for that. It's impossible. I mean, I still get nervous, and I still don't know what to do to get ready for it, right? So the only thing I told him is, like, listen, there's going to be a lot of people screaming. Enjoy it. Enjoy it as much as you can. It's going to be very intimidating. And I don't know if having the loud music helped or not. You can't hear the crowd as much, but uh, I'm pretty sure he, he had a lot of fun. Obviously, it's a little, you know, you kind of, it's easy to freeze in the moment, right? It's hard to to take it all in. But um, it looked like he had a lot of fun, you know, he was able to make that, that birdie tap in 17. Told him it was uh, his first birdie on the PGA Tour. Not many 14 year olds can say that. Uh, and he seemed to have a lot of, a lot of fun. So uh, that was the goal of today. And he definitely has a story to tell on Monday in school. All right, thanks. We'll go right here and then if you'd pass it back to Daniel. John, just playing a lot of golf in Scottsdale in general. When you're on this course, does it feel similar to whether you're at Silverleaf or anywhere else around here? Does it feel kind of home? Uh, yes and no. Um, because most courses, 
won't be able to achieve the firmness that this golf course can achieve, especially with the weather we've had. These greens are firm and firmer than usual. So uh, you used to play in desert golf, and I think the altitude, you know, just living here, I'm used to how far the ball goes, which can be a challenge for some people. But, you know, it's hard to get used to this, how firm and fast the greens are, right? Um, I play in server leaf a lot. The greens are just as fast, but they're definitely not as firm. And, you know, that's something that you can only accomplish here. Plus, each course is a little bit different, right? Everybody says it tends to break towards the valley, but each green's a little bit different. So uh, some things you learn only by playing a golf course enough times. But um, one of the reasons I've done well is because, yeah, I feel like I have the, a bit of the, the home field advantage. Daniel? Hey, John. As a leader on tour, number one player in the world, I wanted to ask you your thoughts on Phil Mickelson's comments last week about the PGA Tour and what he deems to be obnoxious greed. Listen, I try to stay away from most things. Uh, I'm here to play golf, and that's about it. Um, Phil has been on tour for a very long time, and I'm not here to judge anybody, right? Uh, Phil said what he said, and that's it. He's still a great friend of mine. Um, I don't know why he said what he said or why he said how he said it, but uh, what I can say is I support him as a friend, Yet, I don't agree with everything he said. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I'm 27 years old. I can count myself pretty lucky to be where I'm at in life. I'm also 27. Um, one question that was completely unrelated. With how frequently you've finished in the top 10, do you derive any satisfaction from top 10 finishes? Or is it at a point in your career now where if you don't win or challenge for the title, is it almost a disappointment? It would be a very sad golfer's life if any time I finish in the top 10, it's a disappointment. Uh, we're, we're in a sport, unfortunately, where the winning is playing in history, well, what, 30% of the time? So we lose most of the time. And you can't take every week you don't win as a disappointment. Um, if I'm finishing the top 10, I can't say it's a bad week. It all depends how it happens, but there's always something you can call an achievement on a week when you finish up there. Plus, I do make it a point to be consistent. I've mentioned that before. Uh, if I don't win, I want to finish as high as possible. It matters to me. Fifth is better than sixth, definitely. Obviously, I want to finish higher, but and 34th is better than 35th, right? So that's probably why my top 10 percentage is highest, because I'm never going to give up no matter what point I am in my on the round or on the tournament. It's, uh, I'm a competitor, right? So I'm going to try my hardest in every shot. And again, if I can finish one higher, it makes a difference to me. Bill and Mike Cameron. John, uh, the issues produced a lot of great players, and they've got another one in Preston Summerhays. I just wonder if you have met him and um, if you see any similarities between his career and your career. I've played quite a bit with him, actually. They live in Serve Relief. So uh, me, Preston, and Tony Fino have actually played quite a few rounds of golf. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people saw when us three played together and Tony shot 59. People don't know is that Preston was eight under through nine that day. Right? He's definitely a very talented player. And he's only a freshman in college, right? Uh, he's still like his whole college career ahead of him. So do I see similarities so far? No. We grew up in very different environments. He has very different personality to what I have. Uh, and the one thing I can say, you know, maybe both at this point in age, uh, we're both talented golfers. And he definitely is an amazing golfer and has what it takes, has the tools and the determination to, to be out here and not only be out here, but be one of the best in the world. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him out here soon. Did you get your exemption when you were a freshman at ASU? Junior. Junior. Yeah. That's a little different, right? I, when, when I got here, I think I was, I was already, I had won the world amateur, um, played really good college golf. And if I wasn't number one in the world, I was close to being number one in the world. Uh, but I had three years of college, right? We'll see in three years what Preston has done. He's already won a college event early on, and the team is doing amazing, right? So if he stays in college that long, which most kids tend not to nowadays, uh, we'll see how far he can get. OK, we, since you all have the mic, do you have the microphone? OK, we'll go here, here, and then we'll finish up with uh, Cameron. Uh, John, I know DJ's walking with you this week. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your relationship with him? Great friendship. Um, you know, when I first heard about what he did and what he stood for, I was actually, he, very smart of him, he befriended Kelly before me. 
right? And uh, she explained uh, what DJ did. I seen him on the course, but I didn't really know what uh, you know what he was working on every time he was out there. And I thought it was such a cool concept that as soon as I could, I jumped on uh, I jumped on his team and got to meet him, got to spend some time with him. I think we got really close. A few years ago in Hawaii, uh, he was working for somebody else in Maui, but we met each day at the bar that bar they had at the Ritz in the, in the lobby and just, you know, we were watching college football and just hanging out and came to realize how cool of a person it is and how amazing it is that somebody that was born with such condition turns it all around and becomes such an inspiration not only for myself but to many people in this world, right? I mean, since 2008, the guys walked more golf holes than I have played, uh, than most people have played, actually, almost double on the PGA Tour, travels 48 weeks out of the 50 weeks a year, and is really committed to what he does and helping people out, especially helping people with, with needs. It's really, really incredible, it's really remarkable. And people like that are, like I said, very inspirational. They inspire me to be a better person. And for as a father now, he could be such a great example for my son, right? I mean, he was born perfect, had a great delivery. Guy's blonde, blue eyes, good looking, has it all already. And to be around people like DJ can put perspective in life and realize how lucky he is to be in the situation he's going to be growing up. So, uh, and like I said, me as well, you know, I'm very fortunate to call him a friend because the best thing about him is, excuse my language, if he needs to call you a shithead, he'll call you a shithead, <laughs> which is amazing. <laughs> and it's one of the greatest things about him. He doesn't care what you've done or well, how much you accomplished. He cares who you are as a person. That's the beauty about him. And... I can't say enough, ni enough nice things about him. That's why he's a great friend of mine, and uh, hopefully I can, he can walk with me and follow me many more tournaments, and hopefully we can keep contributing to, uh, to the foundation. Quick, quick follow, was uh, the US Open last year the last time that he walked with you? Yes, yeah. I mean, if you can have him twice a year. I mean, he's really booked out, right? He's got a lot of players to, to walk with him, so uh, if you can have him twice a year, that's lucky. Um, he's walked with me here before, I believe. And he likes to say, I mean, my worst fin is, well, he was following me, he's been 13th, which was actually here. So we're looking to improve. And like he said yesterday, he uh, he's very competitive. He's looking towards going for back-to-back -back trophies. So hopefully I can do that for him. Okay, right here, and then we'll finish with Cameron. John, you're world number one. You get to play nine holes today with Aaron Rodgers, who's probably going to be NFL MVP again. What is nine holes with Aaron Rodgers like, and how do you guys kind of go back and forth picking each other's brains? You know, there wasn't much brain picking. Try to get out of him, see what he's going to be doing next year. <laughs> I think that's the only. I think I, I, you know, bothered him a little bit because it was one more of three thousand people that asked him on the first few holes. Uh, it's just fun to see him, you know, mess with me and interact with the crowd and try to put me off. Uh, but then it's also even more and more enjoyable after he's done that. See how nervous he gets. You know, there is no reason to be nervous. I mean, the guy plays in front of a crowd every week and see him hit bad shots. I mean, I don't know if you saw, but that second shot on 18, Jesus Christ. <laughs> For that good a caliber player, that wedge shot came out like a home run. I mean, that thing was, and it's all due to nerves. And it's just funny to see somebody who's out there, who's MVP, who's one of the, you know, one of the best quarterbacks of all time, be that nervous. It's just really fun. And we had a great group and, you know, it was really, really enjoyable. One of the things we talked about, we shared uh, my physio. has been his physio in the past. He's seen him as well, so we talk about it a little bit. Uh, you know, ask him how bad his body hurts after a football game. You know, things that us golfers don't experience. Uh, it was fun. You know, it's too bad it was only nine holes. Okay, we'll finish up with Cameron. Uh, getting back to uh, in inspiration and, and being inspirational, what do you hope comes out of your relationship with Phoenix and sort of the message uh, to other people, maybe with Clubfoot? And then yeah. what do you anticipate sort of going forward in, in your relationship with him? I have no idea. Um, he's the first person I've met that had this condition, uh, in, you know, and uh, what I realized is how far the, the treatment has come because uh, basically when I was born, they broke my foot in place and got casted and that's why I have the limited mobility I have. In his case, they had a different system to where they put, I don't know if it's a cast, but basically they mold something to your foot so slowly it keeps going back into place and that's what they did with him. I think he has some surgeries for their reasons. Uh, but, you know, I love to meet more kids. Uh, I know on a scale from 
one to ten. I think mine severity wise was maybe a three. I think he told me he was around a six, and I know if you're past, I think they said past eight is inoperable. I think you just there's no comeback, right? So obviously, I within what I had, I was very, very, very well off, right? And when I was born, if you had told my parents I was going to be an elite golfer, I don't think they would have believed you. Um, and like I said to his parents, I think when he was born, when all that happened, how we told them that today he was be walking out here the way he's walking, or be a golfer, trumpet player. I don't know if they would have believed it either. So like them, there's probably many more kids out there. And again, I've said it before, it just should not limit you in life. And like DJ as well, just because this happens to you, yes, you can't do certain things, but you can be an inspiration to many people. And Phoenix, Phoenix has a great story to tell that he's gonna be able to tell in the future, much like DJ has a great story to tell. And, and truly we need more people like them in this world to be shown out there. It's not all about TikTok dances and being popular. Right. This is people that make an impact in life, people that make a difference. And uh, I'm glad Shriners Hospital has helped me put that together. So hopefully I can keep meeting more with the condition and, uh, you know, make them realize that they can be pro athletes. We've seen NFL players without hands. So anything can happen. Well, Phoenix, he said some nice things about you. John, thank you for your time. Best of luck this week. Thank you. Thanks, John.